Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews and have we got a treat for you today. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with my channel and I'm going to start a new series where I'm going to be talking to some just really interesting people about golf, all sorts of aspects of golf. And today we are starting off with an absolute banger because as you can see, I've got the one and only Mr. Jack Slade here on my channel. Welcome Jack. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, you said interesting people. I'm not sure I'm the guest that you expected uh, for <laughs> as, as an interesting person. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> well, I find you interesting and there's a few other people Thank as well you. that do. So it's going to be a good chat between me and you either way. That's absolutely fine. Um, for so, sure. So I thought if it's okay, so for those of you who uh, don't know, I'll get Jack to introduce himself and, and his channel and just kind of what he does on YouTube, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. What's up, everyone? Uh, my name is Jacques Slade. I am a YouTube content creator. I do a lot of stuff around sneakers and basketball, a little bit of fashion and sport technology. I kind of dabble in all of those worlds, but the main part of my world is sneakers. And the reason why I got my invite here is because I absolutely love golf. Uh, it's the newest sport, I would say, in my arsenal, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Absolutely, and actually, that's the, the, one of the main reasons why I invited you onto the channel. Uh, because I've been watching your videos for, to be honest, uh, probably a couple of years now, actually. And awesome. I'm, I wouldn't call myself the biggest sneakerhead. I like sneakers or trainers. Sorry if I say trainers, there'll probably be a few kind of UK US <laughs> terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like my trainers, but I'm not a sneaker sneakerhead. Is it? But I am a massive golf person, as anyone knows on my channel, and I've started to see some more golf stuff kind of coming on, coming onto your channel, sneaking on. So in previous videos, you've kind of mentioned it and kind of like hinted. And I think more recently now, where there's new limited editions and that kind of stuff, you're starting to actually showcase them on your channel a bit. Um, so I invited you on the channel and you were kind enough to say yes. So we're going to have a chat about golf. Um so in a little bit, we'll talk about like golf fashion and stuff like that. But for now, let's just talk about you and golf. So at the moment, you know, you're a golfer. So how, how much do you play at the moment? Uh, right now, because of the pandemic, the current situation we're in, I haven't been playing as much as I would like to. So I've probably only played, I would say, you know, maybe four or five times since the pandemic started. So probably since March, only like four or five times that then I've been able to actually get out to a course. I've gone to the range a couple of times, just like on a random, like if I'm going for lunch and uh, just because there's a range really close to the studio. So uh, I'd go to the range and spend like an hour there. I've done that a few times. But yeah, that's that's not that's about it. Not as often as I would like to play. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a handicap at all? Or do you play to a handicap? No, no, I'm scared to get my handicap because <laughs> I don't want to know how bad I am. <laughs> I don't want to know how bad I am. I don't need it to be official that I'm bad. I, I think I already know that. Oh, I am. Um, you know what? I played on Saturday and you mentioned with lockdown. So I played for the first time here in the UK because we've been in a quite tight lockdown for the last kind of month or so, six weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And I played, I didn't swing a club through lockdown, like not at all. And I went and played in a competition and this is going to scare my viewers when I kind of say this, that I shot, uh, we did a competition. I scored three points on the front nine, three, like I should be scoring 18. I scored three. And in the back nine, I shot 18, which is kind of what I should be shooting. So I, I'm i jealous even that you've been kind of getting to go to the range and just kind of yeah. keep it in there, you know, keep it dialed in. That's one of the that's one of the good things about living uh, in California and L.A. particularly. You can pretty much play golf year round. Um, there There is like we don't like the winter. It's cold here, uh, you know, 50, 60 degrees. Sometimes it gets down to 40 um and we can still you know you can still go play you know you gotta bundle up in the you know if you go out early enough you gotta bundle up a little bit and you know might be a you know a little chilly in the morning but it usually kind of warms up to about the to about, to about the 60s by the end of you know by the midday so you're pretty good in that regard oh man there are people in the uk dreaming of those temperatures i'm telling you that is that's like <laughs> beautiful so in terms of kind of um where you play uh What's your, have you got a favorite course that you've played? Um, I don't, the favorite course that I've played. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. See, I, have, I haven't, 
I, I haven't been able to play at any like any of the fancy courses. So all the courses that I play are, are what we call here in the States, they call them munis, um, they're public courses. Um, and so I haven't really played at like a super fancy course. It's all been like very like regular courses. Uh, if anything, um, the favorite course I played, I went to Masters, uh, what was it, three years ago? Four years, I think it was 2017. 2017, I went to Masters. Um, and there's a course that's probably a, about an hour away. I, f I forgot what it's called, but it was like this really beautiful course. I went out there with Nike uh, as part of like their golf initiative. And we got to play on this really beautiful course. I don't remember the name of it, but it was like down the way from, from Augusta. And it was just, just beautiful, like beautifully manicured, just set up just perfect. And I was, I was like, I don't even de deserve to be here. This is way too nice for my <laughs> golf game. Way like, too nice for my golf game. So have you got um have you got kind of like a core group that you always go out with like of friends that you all play golf together? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Me and my buddies we go we go all the time. Uh, my buddy Tony, he's the one that actually got me into golf. Uh, he kind of started it, and then we had a uh, like there's a group of about five or six of us that you know we kind of rotate a foursome between between the five or six of us. Yep. Um, and we go play whenever we can all get together. Nice. And so you've not been playing since you were a kid. You kind you picked it up a bit later. Oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, I picked up golf in twenty fourteen, twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen. So I've been playing since twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen. I played like one round before then, and obviously, you know, like putt putt golf um, <laughs> before then as well. But like an actual round of golf, I played one before twenty thirteen. And then after 2013, I don't know how many it's been. Yeah. Okay. And so this is going to sound a little bit weird, but it's a, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. When you play golf, are you driving for show or putting for dough? Uh, well, I'm bad at both. So <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, really... I. I would say driving for show more than more than putting for dough. Uh, my my game around the green needs incredible improvement. So <laughs> yeah, definitely driving for show. <laughs> so do you think you'd ever take lessons, or are you taking lessons at all? Like to kind of, or you're not. I need, I need to take lessons. I need to take lessons because uh, I've I've been told like I have a great swing, and I'm I'm very, I guess, flexible for a golfer. Uh, I don't know if that comes from playing basketball or or what it was, but um, everyone always like my natural my natural swing goes back just really far, just because I'm really flexible. And um, everyone says like I need to get lessons to kind of help tune it up down at the ball because um, it was like I would be so much more consistent if if I was just tuned up. It's like because you have a great swing, I have the mechanics down. It's just a matter of like kind of tightening it up. Like I, it feels weird if I if I do like a half swing. Like there's no telling where the ball is going to go. It's yeah. So I definitely need lessons. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, it's just finding the time to try and fit it in yeah. with life really. Yeah. And th yeah. the thing is with lessons as well, you've got to be careful. I'm, I'm having maybe one a month at the moment and I've seen massive improvements in my game, which is really kind of nice to now see, mm. but it had to get worse before it got better. And that's this kind of scary right. thing to kind of go, okay, I know I might look bad on the course in front of my friends for a few rounds. Yeah. Uh, scary, but but you know it's 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 worth it in the end. You know, golf golf is you know it happens to be one of those things that you can play for a lifetime, and if you get it right now, then you won't have to worry about it later as much. And you know that's what I tell all my friends that are starting to get into it now. Like I'll go and I'll play around with them, but I'm like, okay, first thing you need to do though is get lessons. Like don't start playing and pick up any bad habits and bad mechanics just go now and get lessons that way you're pretty much dialed in like for the rest of your life as opposed to me who i'm just playing to play and i haven't gone to take lessons yet which i should have <laughs> and so you can see that in my game where i'm consistent for three holes and then the next six you know i'm searching for my ball after every time i hit it <laughs> so are you are you playing for uh fun or like what so people get different enjoyment out of golf, I suppose. So some people enjoy the competition and some people just enjoy being able to shut off from the world and tune out and kind of it's a few hours that you get to yourself. And yes, you're hitting a little ball yeah, as you yeah, go. Yeah. Are you in it for the competition? I, I kind of get the feeling you might be, but I could be totally wrong. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the group, with a group of guys, yeah, it's it. We're, we definitely have some trash talk between between the group whenever whenever we play every hole. Um, so for that, in in that regard, for the competition, yes, I want to be the best kind of amongst my friends. I think, um, but I don't know if I have the the want to be like a pro golfer or to be like a professional golfer. Like I just, I really want to be good enough where I can play with anyone that I think that's more of what it is. Like I want to be good enough where I can play with anyone, not beat anyone, but be good enough to, to play. And it's like, Oh, okay. Like he plays golf. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anytime you come to the UK, I don't know if you've been to the UK, actually, have you come to the UK before or I have, I was there. I was in London. Um, Gosh, I don't know what the pandemic, I don't know what, what time is. <laughs> so maybe a year, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I was in I was in London. Uh and I've come to London a couple times with uh with SneakerCon. Um so I've been there I've been there a couple times. Well, if you come back over, you've got an open invitation, we'll go for a round of golf. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. You just might have to bring an extra few layers like to kind of keep warm. Really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's one of, like I would love that because like I whenever I go to a new city I, I run as well so in the like when I go to a new city one of the things that I do like the first morning that I'm there is I'll get up early and I'll just go for a run through the city to kind of just get a look at different parts of the city that I wouldn't normally see if I'm in a car going to some sort of conference or something like that I, I definitely I like to just go out on the run and just take off in a random direction and just see what the city has to offer yeah yeah it's um i'm guessing no no opportunity for golf when you come last time purely purely business no and like i and honestly you know i didn't even think about it i, I, I didn't even think about it i probably i probably could have made the time if i would have thought about it because like i made the time to run a few times um and i actually linked up with a few people that i know in the uk that run as well and so we went on like a run through the city but I haven't, I didn't even think about playing golf. I've never, I guess I've never really thought about playing golf in a different city, but that, that's fun. That's a fun idea. The one, as, and we'll come on to this kind of like fashion in a little bit, but um, there's so many kind of differences, I think, when I talk to people um, in the States about how golf is over there compared to, to the UK. And I think, hmm. something that always kind of, I'm struggling to get my head around, but I think it's normal for you guys. Do you walk the course or is it buggy every time? Um, it depends. Okay. It depends. Um, kind of, sometimes we, we, we definitely, we usually are in the cart more often than not. Um, or we have the, um, or we walk with the, um, with the, the, uh, the, the thing, I forgot, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> Goodness gracious. The, uh, uh, like the you know, push the cart. That, to carry your clubs, the push cart. Yep, yeah. Yep. Or we walk with the push cart. Um, I've never played and carried my clubs either i walk with a push cart or i'm or i'm in the uh in the buggy yeah okay yeah that's see see when you if you played in the uk vast vast majority will carry or push cart and there'll be really very very few people using buggies which is really wow it's kind of uh from what i've experienced i would almost Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, as I was gonna say, from what I've experienced is that when I've gone and used a buggy, it's normally when it's like a golf vacation and you kind of want to, mm. all right, make the most of it. And so maybe you've gone out for a meal and a couple of drinks as well. And you go, you know what? A buggy's probably going to be a good idea this morning. Um, but most of the time, yeah, it's just, we've never really gotten into the whole buggy thing. It's always just been, yeah, walk or carry. Yeah, for the most for the most part, and maybe this is just because that's how Tony did it, and that's why that's how I do it. Because um, Tony was kind of like th that taught me like the etiquette of golf, and we always we always always took the cart. Yeah. And so now when I go, I always take the cart unless I'm doing like a a par three. Otherwise, I'm I'm almost always in the cart. Only time I've walked is. I walked with, um, I went golfing with a couple of people from my church a couple of times and Fred, who's like the best golfer I, I know personally, he would always walk. And so I would feel like, well, if Fred's walking, I've got to walk. Like I can't get a car. I can't, I can't be, be jollying around in a cart and Fred's walking. And so I was like, I would just walk cause Fred was walking. But otherwise, other, other than that, 
it's it's pretty standard to, to to be in the car even at the even at the public muni courses and i think it's actually quite interesting something you said there where you're kind of coming to golf i'm not gonna say late because any time is a good time to start playing golf but not as a child you, you've not lived with golf you've not it's, it's not what you've known did you find some of like the etiquette a bit odd maybe or a bit kind of um yeah a bit jarring perhaps um some 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 of the things like um well i mean i guess more of the 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 things that i found odd were like the almost like the fashion requirements um <laughs> for for golf and that you had to dress a certain way to play and had to dress a certain way to to be at at certain clubs um and obviously the becoming from being a basketball player all my life the 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 requirement for being quiet was was a little weird as well because in basketball you know it's it's a lot of trash talk like someone shooting a free throw you don't just let them shoot like you talk <laughs> you talk trash the whole time you know what i mean you're yeah. you're trying to get them to miss that shot and in golf it's that's not yeah that that's not the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not the way at all <laughs> yeah but i suppose when you with your buddies as long as you're not affecting other players, you play how you want to play. So if you want to, if you want to yeah. kind of, yeah, do a bit of trash talking or whatever, then yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 We do. We do a, we do a little bit, but even within that group, we kind of adhere mostly to the rules of golf. Um, every once in a while, we'll break the rules if, you know, we're, we're feeling particularly rowdy, but for the most part, we kind of, <laughs> We try to we try to uh, try to respect the rules of the game and the and the etiquette of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you you mentioned you mentioned fashion there, and this kind of a big part of kind of well, it's a huge part of your life. God, it's kind of yeah. <laughs> like, and it, and yeah. it's a little bit a part of my life and kind of what my channel is about. So, it, I'm keen to kind of talk about the golf fashion because it's always it's a funny subject because it's it's not just kind of straightforward. There's a lot of history and tradition behind kind of yeah golf and its fashion and i think i think it's fair to say that a lot of golf clubs certainly here in the uk I, i'm not sure how different it is in america but certainly in the uk there's a lot of golf clubs that really pride themselves on that tradition and want to mm -hmm. want to keep a lot of that tradition and yet we've got brands so major brands nike adidas a are kind of bleeding that fashion world into golf and they're, and they're putting their yeah. putting their pro golfers on telly in outfits that you would never have seen yeah, yeah. five years ago probably you know it's kind of 10 years ago at least and it's kind of a funny one I'm, I'm trying to think if there's another sport where where it's really tried to hold on to tradition that much like basketball in, basketball is really close to your heart, and in, in my mind, it's kind of it's kind of basketball is the fashion in itself, and then people wear right. the basketball clothes in the real world. Yeah, it's not as if you're trying to get yeah. some brand trying to dictate what basketball fashion wears, and yet with golf, it's almost right. the other way around. It's it's fashion brands are trying to dictate, hey, this is what golfers are going to look like moving forward. It's just such a such a strange position at the moment because it's causing a lot of conflict. Um, yeah, uh, I think I think a lot of that has to do with the traditional person that played golf. So I think that as the golf world expands and more people are getting into golf, you're going to see a different audience on the course. And with that different audience comes a different version of who they are, a different way of interpreting themselves creatively, uh, whether that's through fashion or how they play the game. And I think with 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 golf, I, I think it's you know it's pretty common knowledge that there was a certain level like middle management and above CEO, very you know all very well to do person that dressed a certain kind of way played golf. Uh, it's part of the dynamic of the game and part of the fact that you know you had to have a certain amount of money to be able to play golf. You had to you know you had to to be able to spend four hours and spend a hundred dollars or whatever it is to play golf. You know that's a cert that's that's a certain person, but I think the the one wealth has also has changed a little bit. So different people have money that do different things and don't necessarily adhere to those same rules that you know other people 
adhere to and you have younger audiences getting into it and younger audiences are always going to rebel. They're always going to want to wear what they want to wear. They're not going to want to wear, they don't want to be on a course, let alone walking down the street in the same outfit that their grandfather or even that their father is wearing. And so that's where you see you have these differences in opinions about what you should wear and perform, and you know how you sh how you should wear it even. So I think that's where a lot of that is starting to happen now as brands start to understand the dynamics of a newer generation. They understand that this generation doesn't want to wear knickers and a college shirt on a course. They don't want to wear hard bottoms. They don't want to wear dress shoes. That's just not their style. That's just not how they how their creativity comes across and so you see brands recognizing that and you see brands springing up that have a better understanding of that new generation and they're moving that needle further away from what the traditional golfer would look like i mean we saw we saw that kind of happening with like ricky when ricky fowler got into the league with the bright colors even then it was like oh my god why is he wearing these bright colors <laughs> for god's sakes he's wearing orange what is what is wrong with this man you know what i mean and you're like jesus christ the man's wearing orange is that is, is that 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 bother you that much and with the bigger with the bigger brim on his hat like wearing more like the skater style hats and they were just like oh my god he's wearing this big brim hat it's a, i mean what what is what is where's the game coming to and you're like really for colors and a hat that's what you're mad about like and so you see that transition starting to happen in more people that love golf just as much as the next person but they wear Jordans or they they wear Adidas or they wear, they wear whatever, you know, sneaker brand they like. They wear Yeezys and they love golf just as much and they want to have that Yeezy, that same sort of Yeezy feel on the golf course. Why why not? Yeah, yeah. So do you, do you think that golf, uh, golf courses and clubs, whether it's country club or whether it's municipal course, they're going to have to change sooner or later because there's still... So, for example, at my course, there is no way I would be allowed to play golf in a hoodie. And, I, and I'm not... It's not the most reserved course in the world, um, but it all... I don't know how much kind of translated over in America, but it was a huge thing kind of here in the UK with Tyrrell Hatton recently kind of... He won a PGA competition in a hoodie and so many people were just saying, I can't do that. How comes the pro on telly where where I think it's Adidas in this case, Adidas are trying to get you to buy this hoodie because, hey, this guy looks yeah. cool and he's winning. And you go, wait, well, I can buy the hoodie, but I'm not allowed to wear it. It's a, it's a really strange position to be in. Normally, brands want you to get the hoodie because you can wear it, because you can be like the pro. You can wear this guy's sneakers because he's wearing yeah. them and he's winning. Um, It's kind of... Do you think the brands? Do you think the brands are going to win out ultimately and and force golf's hand? I think the brands will eventually. Win. I, I, and I don't even want to blame it on the brands. I would say it's the players because the players want to have that to express themselves in their own way. the The way that I see it is if if it affects your performance, then you shouldn't wear it. That that should be the rule. Like if you can't play in it because it's too tight or it's too loose or it's too baggy and it's it's affecting your swing, which only you as an individual know, then that should denote whether or not you should wear it. Yep. But otherwise, you play, your play should be the rule. Like that should be the determining factor. Like you're you know, like anything else is is arbitrary, it's just a random rule that they've made up. I think a lot of a lot of golf courses, including, you know, many of them here in the States, they have a certain, they feel like they need to have a certain prestige in order to be considered a golf course. Um, and that, that's no longer the case. Like that, the prestige that they use to define them is not the prestige that divide, that defines people anymore. People don't adhere to that, that set those rules as much anymore. And so that code of, this is the blah 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 country club like that like that sort of feeling is gone like that no one people don't adhere to that anymore except for like the older people like it's like it's like people that watch the, the new generation that watches content on youtube and on TikTok and on instagram and all of those places they don't care about traditional tv even though we love tv because that's kind of what we grew up on as children they don't care. They they could care less whether it's on TV or it's on their phone. It's the same to them. 
and the golf is the same way, whether you grew up playing in knickers or you grew up wearing, uh, you know, cause you're a basketball player and you wear basketball shorts with compression pants underneath. And that's your style when you, when you, when you want to be athletic and play, then that's what you wear. Yeah. And I, th- I think if, if I had, all, if I had all the money in the world and could run my own golf course, I'd, I'd want to give it a shot and go anyone where anything what you want as mm-hmm. you say kind of almost almost within reason so it's not offending other people <laughs> to be fair right um but right. yeah you know if you and even to the point where you know we have golf courses where they don't want you to wear trainers um you have to wear golf shoes um but I'm I'm kind of of the opinion where if you wear trainers and it makes you a worse golfer and that's on you. That's up to you. If you don't want to wear trainers, if you don't want to wear golf shoes, be my guest. It might make you play a little bit worse, but you're not going to do any damage to the course and you're not going to offend anyone. Certainly not right. playing at my golf club. And I just, I think I'm keen to see how this develops. So I think it's going to be really interesting over the next kind of five to 10 years, how yeah. quickly yeah. golf golf courses and how quickly golf catches on. Because... I think there'll be a tipping point where the young younger generations who want to get into golf kind of go, oh, you, you know what? It's it's easier for me to go play basketball, or it's it's because yeah. golf's golf's not golf's still not cheap. Yes, there's more people playing it, but your clubs are going to cost you a couple of hundred dollars if you get a real cheap set. You got yeah. you got to pay sixty dollars to go to a municipal course every time you go. You got to have someone drive you there, or, or you know paid to get to the course and whatnot it's not cheap so i think i think golf should be bending over backwards to just kind of go please come play come use our course here please (laughs) please please come play here yeah yeah Yeah. for sure so kind of bring it back a little bit to to fashion what what are you wearing on the golf course are you are Um, you wearing technical or are you wearing golf casual um, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a mix of things to be honest. Um, so I, as I told you, I play basketball. So a lot of my like my workout clothes um, that I wear. So I wear like compression pants and you know basketball shorts and some some sneakers. Um, I'll usually wear though like wear something like that at the bottom, and then I'll wear like a polo sometimes. Or I'll wear. Um, I really like the uh, the collarless Nike polos that they did a few years ago. Yeah. So I have I have a batch of about seven or eight of those, <laughs> and so I, I that's that's probably what I wear ninety nine percent of the time is like the collarless ones. Yeah. Just because it's comfortable. Like I don't want to wear a collar. It still feels kind of like a t shirt. It's short sleeve. It's thin. Um, that's typically typically what I wear. Um, every once in a while, I wear pants. I wear or I'll wear like golf shorts. Yeah. Um, like proper golf shorts, but I'll wear like my compression pants underneath with my trainers. Um, and like, I, they'll be like the same colors, like black or whatever in match. Um, and, but that, that's typically what it is. It's either like, I very rarely do I wear actual golf pants. Um, because one, it's generally not cold enough. And when it is cold, I just wear, I put on, <laughs> I put on compression pants and wear shorts to go with it kind of thing. Yeah. So do you wear do you wear just sneakers or do you wear golf shoes or or like the hybrid? I, I wear golf sneakers. You wear golf sneakers. So what are you wearing at the moment? Yeah. So so uh, I wear like the the Jordan the Jordan golf shoes or um, uh, like the the Nike golf shoes that look like sneakers. So I have the the React. Uh, I have um, the like the ninety seven. So I'm wearing for the most part recently. I've been wearing like all of the retro golf shoes that that Nike is making. Um, I've also worn the, um, the Adidas, um, uh, the one with boost, the one that has boost, the golf shoe that has boost looks like a tennis shoe. I can't think of the name uh, of it. Code chaos. Um, the code, the code chaos. Um, and there's another one. Um, so the, go- the, the Adidas, it's either Adidas or Nike stuff that looks like a sneaker. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those right there. Yeah. Those. Yeah. 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 G- great shoe, by the way. Like not not necessarily the most fashionable shoe different definitely no, different no. I w- but i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't wear these out you know right. but they right. definitely don't look like anything else i'm trying to get it in focus anyway definitely don't look like anything else that's kind of come before on golf which i think is really cool and just so comfortable so comfortable yeah and, that, and that's part of it too is like these shoes are comfortable like i don't want to wear like sh- brogue 
you know, golf shoes like that, that have brogue detailing on the toe box. Like that's just not that's just not my vibe. You, I, I did wonder. I did wonder if you ever kind of go. You know what? I'm gonna go old school today. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of no no. You've not you've not got. I thought you might have like a single pair of like smart old school golf shoes. Um, I I have some. Yeah, but I I've never worn them. Yeah. I have, yeah, I have some. I'm, Nike did um, like a dress shoe. So part, I guess part of the reason why my fashion sense is this way is because when I got into golf in 2013, the first golf shoe that I personally owned was the TW13, yep. which looked like, looked like a sneaker. So that also helped kind of informed like what I needed to wear on the course. I never felt that I needed to wear like the older school with the, like the, with the brogue detailing and the hard bottom or the leather upper that needs to be polished. Like I just, yeah. I just never did it. So I've always, I've always worn golf shoes that I could wear off the course as well, fashionably. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where like my fashion sense lies. Yeah. I, re- I reckon, I reckon you should maybe get an outfit like full technical brogue, not tell your buddies one day and just go <laughs> just show up to the course this, let's get it on this this it's game day boys it's just <laughs> oh my god they would be like what do you have on <laughs> <laughs> just yeah just own it yeah i know i know this is, I, I came to play this is it <laughs> oh, yeah they're like you they're like you better you better hit you better be like 10 under wearing that outfit <laughs> you better you, you better be at 10 under today where walking in here dressed like that <laughs> so if you could what what would you want to see as your next golf show but like kind of any brand and is there a shoe at the moment that you go oh man i wish they'd make that into a golf show oh that wish they oh man this there's actually, uh, and then I know your your your, uh, your viewers are gonna hate me here. Oh, um, but like I, I would love to see some of like the '90s basketball stuff turned into golf shoes. Yeah, like um, like I love like the Pippins with the air, the air more up tempo with the big air on the side. Like I thought those would be kind of cool as a golf shoe. Yeah, uh, some of, some of like the Barclays, the CB34. That would be that would be kind of dope as a golf shoe. Um, what else? Um, you know, there's a shoe that, where is it? Um, (laughs) LeBron released a shoe with John Elliott a few years ago, uh, called the, hold on, I'll grab one real quick. Yeah, go for it, man. Keep talking. So there's this shoe called the LeBron Icon. Um, this is the pink color, but they have it in black and they have it in white as well. Like I think this would make a fantastic golf shoe. It's very comfortable. It's fashionable. It looks nice. Do the integrated traction, so we don't need spikes, but just do like the integrated traction. I think this would be a very interesting golf shoe. Again, I know your your father is going to be like, yeah, he doesn't play golf. Who's who is this guy? There are, how, did you, how did this guy get on your radar? <laughs> there are people watching this video right now in the UK going, oh my god, oh, for <laughs> God's sakes, it's what in God's heavens? Sakes. <laughs> oh man! I'll... They want to see me. Uh, they want to see me in stuff like this. They want to see me in the in stuff like this. Oh, they... This is what they want me to play. Uh, you know what? I nearly bought them yesterday. I nearly bought. That's the yeah, um the uh, the tour the victory tour with the air victory zoom. tour. Yeah, I've never I've never played in the victory tour either. But this is this is what I feel like most people want you to play golf uh, in. Well, I, you know what? Yes, but even so, if I wore them to my golf club, I would get a few raised eyebrows to go, oh, zebra print. Okay. Oh, oh metallic sole. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. See, and this, and this is, this is, I'm, I'm such, this is how, this is when I feel like such an outsider to golf <laughs> because to me, I think I was like, man, that is cool. That is awesome. <laughs> I, if I saw somebody in these on the course, I'd be like, yo, like, where'd you get those? Like, that looks sick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, I totally. Know. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do then, if it's okay. Uh, I've got a couple of shoes here sitting next to me. Um, you've already mentioned okay. some of them, actually. So we're going to get, um, 
we're going to get you to kind of give me some hot takes on these shoes, kind of see what you think. Okay, so let's do it. We're going to start. To be fair, you've already mentioned it, so we'll just quickly kind of put it out. But you, you, you've got this at the moment. I think you said the the Code Chaos, yes. the Adidas Code Chaos. Mm-hmm. So you like this shoe, or not so much? I do. You do? I do. Yeah. So it I is do. so comfortable. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily wear it off the course, but I, I definitely wear it on the course. Like if yeah. To take it on and wear, yeah, like I, I, I love integrated traction more than I love spikes because I just I'm just not good enough. Like, like I don't have a good enough swing where whether it's spikes or integrated traction, like that's not going to matter to me. Like yeah. my swing is not that not that dialed in where I'm like, oh, I need this spike to be like two inches over for to get my swing better. Now we, I'm just like, yeah. You know what? I did a video. Uh, it's not released actually. It's going to release this Monday, and I went in kind of a studio and I put on spiked and I put on. Uh, integrated traction and I put on trainers um, to see measure my drivers and to kind of see distance hardly oh. any difference hard like I actually hit it mm. better in the trainers for some of the shots they were my longest shots I think because you're just more relaxed yeah. and comfortable so it's interesting yeah. it's interesting obviously if you're out on the turf and it's kind of slippery and wet you need that traction but the traction's getting right. so good now i can wear these in the winter you can see there's mud on them and everything yeah you can wear these in the winter you're probably not going to slip they're, they're that good now yeah uh right yep. okay so i don't know if you've seen this one or not i bet you've probably got it to be honest we've got the oh yeah yeah 270 yeah, the 270 like the 270 is a for, first if it's a very comfortable shoe um and again like this is bringing that that athletic lifestyle appeal to golf and and i love it i love what what nike is doing with it um although i heard like the pro players don't necessarily like it as much yeah um but for me like again as the casual golfer that you know where you know i don't i don't have a million dollars on the line like it's fine totally so and you know what i think this is the one of the first ones that i would really wear off the course as well as on because yes. Oh, yes it's got the integrated traction but it's you're going to be fine most of the time and it is so comfortable this is like a pair of trainers it is crazy good job nike on these yeah ones. and no one's gonna and no one's gonna know no no one would know that no one would know that that's a golf shoe totally i tell you what i'm going to share my screen uh because have you seen their new shield version i did see i think i saw the shield version that's like for the rain and stuff and again being here in Southern California, I don't, I don't need, you don't need, <laughs> I don't need the shield. <laughs> um, you know, the most we get is a little bit of dew in the morning. So I guess in that regard, like, yeah, I need the shield, but for the most part, no, but it, but I think it, it looks pretty slick. If I recall, if this is the one that I'm thinking about. Here we go. We're going to share it now. There we go. Uh, right. This one right here. Hopefully you can see the shield there. Yeah. Yeah. Like that looks pretty slick, man. That looks slick. See in, in the UK, I think this has divided a lot of people. And I don't, I don't know, maybe, I think we're just, we're reserved in a lot of ways. And I think maybe fashion is definitely one of the ways that we're reserved as a nation. Mm. Because I think a lot of people go, that's, that's too much. That's the, you, you, you've dialed it up to, to, to 11 and, and we don't like 11. We like, we like a good solid six. Um. Right, right. We'd we, we love a six, <laughs> but if you're going to do 11, we're going to ask you to leave. Um, <laughs> but no, I think these... I think these are like I think they look cool. It's, yeah, you know it's it serves it serves its purpose. It's going it's going to be comfortable because it's a two seventy has that two seventy airbag. It has the integrated traction, yeah. so you're going to get the grip that you need if that's if that's a potential part of your game. And you also look fashionable. Um, like what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's good that they are pushing the bound not pushing the boundaries i don't know whether i'd call that pushing the boundaries but i could i think it's good they're experimenting i'm i'm in desperate need for nike to bring out a technical golf shoe i think a lot of people are they're looking forward to that next technical shoe because if you think back so we've had the 270 we've had the the 97 g we've had the air max 1 g we've had the roche in golf trainer and spiked we've had the brand new infinity tour that brooks kept wore. that's based on the infinity running shoe to be fair, it looks mm-hmm. pretty much the same. So we've gone five golf shoes in a row there. Plus we've had the Cortez in, in women's. That's still a, a shoe that you can buy at the moment. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, which yeah. I wish they would bring that out for men because I love the Cortez. It's a brilliant shoe. Right. So you think they've gone six shoes in a row. It's like, come on, give, give me, give give the dedicated golfer something. Like, what's, like, what do they, and I guess, what do you mean, do you mean to technical golf shoe or traditional golf shoe oh uh, I mean, like, yeah I, I don't think it needs to be traditional I think there are other brands that that's their that's their thing like Footjoy have just released or I think it's coming in February 
um, a new show, uh, the premiere, I think it's called off the top of my head. And that is an old school looking show. Um, but mm. with all the modern technical aspects. And if you want that, technical that's cool. I don't think Nike is ever going to touch that. I don't think they're going to do it. They might do something like tongue in cheek, but they're not going to do it as a, mm. as a release. But I just mean a shoe not based on a trainer. I want a shoe that is the, really suited to golf like every they, this is the focus initially we're not going to take mm, a trainer and adapt you. it i want a shoe that's purely focused on golf performance and then we're going to make it look modern so it's its kind mm, of own gotcha. thing you know okay. and i okay. I, I, I hope okay. they're working on that I, I, I think i think they might be i think fingers crossed next year we might see something but okay you, you'd be in that. the know you'd, you'd be like mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I've got, I've got... No right. comment, no comment, no comment, no comment. <laughs> I've got... To, you know what, I'm not going to do this one because you've already got this in, my, in your collection, but this... Yes. Yeah, this, is, this was quite a big change for us here in the UK as well because basketball sneakers is not such a big deal. There are people who wear them, absolutely, and that's their thing, but mm. in America, I get a sense of feeling that, not the majority, but so many people will just wear basketball sneakers as their everyday sneaker. Here, it's running trainers, Everyone's every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's the big, that, I think that's the big difference between like the American sneakerhead and the UK sneakerhead is uh, in the UK, it's definitely more like runners slash trainers, more important, where here it's basketball slash retro sneakers. Um, but as far as this one goes, I think that this is probably the best of the retro Jordan, like playable like technical stuff. This is probably the best one um, that they've done so far. Like the, the, the Jordan five golf low yeah. is I would say like, is like, that's where like they should try to meet that standard for every golf shoe that they make um, from the retro. Like this, is that's a fantastic shoe. And I, 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 I would love to see an actual pro wear those and see what they think about them um, because of all the retro stuff that I have. Uh, that are golf shoes or all the golf shoes that I have that kind of have that old school or like sneaker feeling to them. Yep. This is probably the best one. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's got a lot going for it, isn't it, in terms of like stability because it's designed for stability for basketball. It's That's what it's about at its core, isn't it? Um, but it is comfortable. It's You know what's funny, and this always makes me laugh, these are lows, and yet on me in the UK, these are like, these, are like, these feel like knee-high boots to me. Like they are so high, <laughs> like crazy, but just because I wear, I wear running train. Uh, right, so here we go. That's funny. La, we'll, we'll call this. Uh, have you seen this one? Have you seen the Puma? Uh, I have seen it. I haven't worn it, but I've seen it. So this is really unique. So I spoke to Puma about this, um, and what they wanted to do is that this is a golf shoe. F- uh, sorry, this is a sneaker first that you can play mm. golf in. It's not designed. So so golf. pros didn't wear it. They kind of said to me, "That's not what this is for." And you can kind of see on the traction, it's not. It's not aggressive, so right. I I, yeah. I could I could wear this every day, and I, I wore it a lot. To be fair, I walked to work in it quite a bit, and so it's really nice that you've got a waterproof sneaker that you can play some golf in. Um, but again, I think it's really That's interesting nice. that that Puma are getting in on it as well. They've kind of seen this market and gone, no, no, no we we need to get it, and they've gone with a. Re- Would you call this a retro shoe? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's based on based like on the retro. RS line. Yeah. Yeah, it's based on the RS running shoes from back in the 80s or 90s. Yeah, I think it was the 80s, 80s, yeah. Maybe the 80s, yeah. So it's based on the running shoe system back on the 80s. So that's where a lot of like that last and the upper comes from. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I like it. Looks looks good to me. And like those, the RS, like the RS Dreamer, their new basketball shoe is really comfortable. The RSX, their running shoes are really comfortable. The RSX3 is really comfortable. Like Puma's just done a fantastic job with their, like the last couple of years with all of their sneakers, really. And they're really pushing the envelope and really kind of changing the perception of that brand. Well, they yeah, you're, you're right. And that's something I've kind of noticed more and more. And it's not just in their normal uh, kind of sneaker line, but I think it's right across the board. So in football, mm-hmm. they've, they've grabbed Neymar and a few others now from Nike. And yeah. he's wearing Pumas. So that's massive for them. And in golf, so it's like that Puma Cobra um, combination, where it's kind of like that that same company. Cobra have kind of I'm not gonna say come from nowhere because they existed, but now <laughs> Cobra golf clubs are huge. Like and yeah, and are, and are doing really well for a price point that's really quite reasonable. Um, so I, I'm I'm big on Puma at the moment. I'm really impressed with what they're doing. 
Last one. I don't think you've seen this before. All right, right. Could I show the one and only Jacques Slade a shoe he's not seen? This is American. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh. Yep. The square. Have you seen the square? I have not seen the square. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. So this is a golf shoe uh, that's really... You know what? Sir Nick Faldo himself has now invested in this company and is a spokesperson for this oh. company. Um, okay. And it is a golf shoe based on kind of the square design. Can you see that toe box? Yeah, that is. It's, and is there is there a benefit to that? They say it gives you a wider kind of plant, so your feet can sit flat rather than be scrunched up towards the end of the toe, and it means that you will have a better base, is what they say. Oh, I imagine because so your so your toes can splay and kind of lock into the ground. Okay, that's kind of what they're that. saying. I get the concept. In the UK, I showed this to a lot of people, and again, they just kind of went, "This is it's too big. It's too big and like kind of clumpy for the UK." But when I compare oh. it to the Jordan, uh, yeah, that's, that's does... why I was like, huh. <laughs> it's not." I think that just shows that difference between UK and, and kind of American markets because this shoe. Yeah, it looks like a traditional sneaker. Yeah, it looks like I mean, almost. It just looks like a sneaker, almost. Yeah, like a regular trainer or sneaker or whatever. Yeah, but there you yeah, go. interesting. Cool. No, I'm not. Ma- I'm not mad at it. I'm, no. not, I'm, not, a, I'm not opposed. <laughs> I'm not opposed. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of everything that I've got in terms of golf, um, and I think that's just been so interesting. So thank you so much for kind of you know coming onto my channel and and just having a bit of a chat about golf and fashion. I think we've got loads more kind of. Uh, content lined up um, and but if anyone wants to kind of check out your channel and you know where you're at where can people find you uh, if you want to find me uh, it's all under my name Jacques Slade everywhere on the internet um, my handle is Kusto, which is K-U-S-T-O-O um, but yeah basically you can find me anywhere under the internet under Jacques Slade or under Kusto, and I'm there brilliant well, Jacques, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Really, really appreciate it. It's been an honor talking to you. Absolutely. It's been fantastic. Hope everyone watching has enjoyed it as well um, and you get a lot out of it. We've got loads more weekly content coming up. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, give my channel a little subscribe. Just just, just a little subscribe. It would be so nice. Yeah, hit that subscribe uh, button, people. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank you, Jacques. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, thank you so much. Loads of weekly content coming out. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll catch you next time.